Welcome folks. What I have for you today is the, uh, a pickup coil assembly out of an HEI or a high energy ignition um, distributor that uh, General Motors and the Chevys used to use back in uh, starting about 1975 and uh, proceeded until I guess you might have got into the early 80s when uh, throttle body uh, fuel injection in the computer started to take over. But anyways, uh, fairly common. A lot of high performance guys, old school type guys, will, will use these uh, uh, HEI coils, uh, uh, coil and cap, if you will, and uh, quite a large distributor cap. But when, what I'm getting at today is uh, this pickup coil assembly. Um, now, the actual coil is what you see in here. Uh, maybe I'll back up a step. You have to remove the distributor. In order to get this out of the distributor, you have to remove the whole distributor from the engine. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, this is what uh, what times the spark when it's supposed to happen. It triggers uh, the module, okay. And each and every time, there's actually a. I don't have a complete distributor to show you. All I've got is some spare parts here, and what I have here has been taken out, and I've, I've I put a new. Uh, what they call it a pull plate, I guess. If you go to a GM dealer or parts dealer, they'll call it a pull plate or a pickup coil assembly or what have you. I'm going to be taking this apart <clears throat> and showing you um, what's what's actually in there when you take the coil out of this thing. Explain the different component parts. Um, like I say, to get this out, you have to remove the distributor and uh, you have to take the shaft and everything out of there and uh, then you, you get it. There's a little clip that holds this whole unit in there and it actually turns here. There's uh, Right in here, there's the uh, the arm for the um, vacuum advance canister, and I'll move this just slightly when the vacuum advance kicks in. This will rotate around the um, the center of the uh, base of the distributor housing there, like so. And uh, start taking this thing apart and explain a bit about it and uh, what's what's going on in there. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll just bring that something to steady it up a little bit. I got a drill press vise here, and uh, I'll just snug this up here so that we can. Um, steady things up so it's not all shaky and all over the place like an earthquake was going on. Alright so I pre-loosened these three screws and uh, it's pretty hard to get this uh, when you put it back together it's pretty hard to get it um, out of place or in a different uh, rotated position. Um, I'll just mention this now. Uh, these two screws are closer together here than the distance it is from here or to here. So it's a triangle but it's not uh, what we refer to as an equilateral triangle. There's uh, two sides that are long, these two sides are long, and this is short, so it's pretty hard to mess up putting this back together. Because I have pre-loosened these screws here, so I'll just uh, take them and get them out of the way. So that's what secures the assembly for the pickup coil. Uh, it might be referred to in the, from the parts guy as a pull plate. And I believe the part that I'm going to be taking off here first is actually the a pull piece. Okay. And that's these triangular shaped things. Like I'd mentioned, if I haven't already done that, is there's a matching set of triangles. This is for an eight-cylinder engine, so there's eight triangles on it. And I've highlighted them with some white chalk so it would show up better in the video. And like I say, for this thing to time, uh, there's a matching set of triangles that goes on the inside of this thing, and it's attached to the distributor shaft proper. Okay, so every time that those uh, two sets of triangles uh, line up, I was trying to explain earlier, is it triggers the module to... Um, <coughs> take the primary voltage away from the uh, coil so the magnetic field can collapse and create the, uh, the high voltage necessary to send on through to the spark plug wires. So here's the actual pull, pull piece if you will. Those are the poles, the eight poles I would assume they would call it as such. And I'll just put this over to the side and then there's a permanent magnet here. Uh, it's not very thick, it's uh, well, not quite an eighth of an inch thick. And it looks kind of like the fridge magnet, uh, a fridge magnet rather, that you'd have on some kind of advertising that you'd stick on your fridge or whatever. Same kind of stuff, it bends very slightly. Um, I had noticed on one, one side of this there's some, I don't know, molding uh, marks or whatever. And those were pointing up, at least the, the last time I remember taking it apart for the first time. Other side's kind of flat, so we'll just try to put that back in the same direction. I don't think it's really going to affect it, but just in case it does, try to get everything exact same way. Like anything mechanical, it's a good idea to put a, a mark or something, a piece of chalk, a chalk marker or whatever, and that way when you reassemble things, then you've got a visual. Or you could even use your smartphone and record as you, you take it apart or whatever. That way you know when you reassemble it, you go in the reverse order and you get everything back in its proper place. So that's a permanent magnet, and what I'll do here is, is I've got just a common nail. 
Uh, it's a little over two inches long, almost an eighth of an inch in diameter. I'll just set this down here and show you how strong this magnet actually is. I'll just move the pole piece out of the way. There's the magnet there, much like a fridge magnet, only a little bit more glorified, you might say. So we'll take that down to that nail, and you can see how strong this magnet is. That's what uh, creates the magnetism for those poles in order to, uh, for this to uh, create the timing uh, signal to send on to the ignition module. Okay, there's that part, and maybe I'll keep them all here. Um, I'll put this guy over here, keep them in frame of the video so you can see the actual component parts. And then they can lift the ignition, or the ignition coil, the uh, pickup coil rather, out of here. And I may, might have mentioned this on another video I had. The reason I took this out of service is because I noticed that it was uh, starting to deteriorate. Um, looks like they had a piece of, uh, looks like white, whitish or this discolored now, some kind of uh, glue or whatever to fix the windings. And then this tape kind of substance, it kind of looks like dried up white hockey tape. But I noticed it started to um, disintegrate with heat and age. But the, the, if you can see this in the video, I don't know if the resolution of this camera will pick it up. But there's very fine windings. They're kind of a, I guess, the uh, the coating on the, the wires. I'm assuming that they would probably be copper, thin copper wire. It looks to be about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 thousandths of an inch thick. Very thin. Many turns of wire on there. And this was uh, starting to show on its age with the heat. So... I decided to replace this whole thing and I asked the guy for a pickup coil and this is what I got was this whole assembly here. So you'll probably be get the same, getting the same if you order new parts such as this or if you got another older distributor to swap parts out of. Just have a look at this pickup coil. The rest of it seems to be pretty robust. There's really not much can go wrong with it except for maybe uh, the hole that the vacuum advance arm um, attaches to here. Just got to watch that it doesn't get too loose in there. Otherwise, uh, you get a bit of a wiggle going on there and your timing will be out a little bit. Okay, so watch the fit where the angled uh, part of that rod comes up in from your vacuum advance canister. And also, when this is uh, pivoting around the, the center shaft assembly here, the housing, whatever goes in here, it's been a while, over 10 years. Uh, make sure that you're not getting very much uh, side slop as well as your shaft. Uh, the distributor shaft itself shouldn't have very much uh, side, or side play or slop. Uh, I wouldn't go any more than five thousandths of an inch. Uh, three, two or three thousandths of an inch sounds better to me. But getting back to this pickup coil, things to watch out for. Um, look at all the wiring and everything. Make sure, I've noticed there's some cracks on here, probably from heat and age. And also you got to remember these wires, they do move slightly back and forth as the vacuum advance is moving. Um, this whole uh, pickup coil assembly or pole plate is the part guy used to call it. And um, check all your connections. This, like I say, this is the number one problematic part you're going to find with the pickup coil is the um, this uh, insulation or the tape or whatever starts to deteriorate with heat and age. And the poor thing has got to sit down inside a distributor where there isn't any ventilating air. It gets really hot there sitting above the engine, uh, being a V8 engine. Uh, especially if you're talking about an application where you're in a, in a van or something, there's not much air gets through there because you've got the doghouse or the engine cover. Uh, not as open as a car under uh, an engine under a hood of a car would be, so to speak. So there's there's what you end up with. There is uh, this thing is all um, disassembled now. There's four four major component parts to this pickup coil assembly. Or like I was mentioning, keep going back to that pull plate that's print. It was printed on the box that this thing came in. But you can call it a pickup coil assembly. Uh, parts guy will probably know what you're talking about. Take your old one in if you have it already out, and that way you can match it up and everything and know what you're talking about. So putting this thing back together, it's uh, it's just the reverse of what you're doing here. If this all checks out and everything, then you can just go ahead and reassemble it. And I think I got that right. Was it that way or was it this way? Alright, so then we get the magnet, and like I say, that triangle shape, um, these two holes are closer together. These two holes here are closer together than these two here, so you can't go wrong. If you try to index that uh, a third of the way around, it just won't go. Okay, it has to be in the right orientation, or otherwise the screws will not go in through their respective holes. Same thing with the pole piece. Can't go wrong there. And the magnet actually holds the whole thing together for you. You just have to line it up and uh, and get the screw. One screw started is usually usually helps you just start it in there by hand. Try not to cross thread anything. You don't want to start stripping threads or anything. Give things a wiggle and 
once you get two in, I should have said uh, the third one just automatically lines up. Whenever you're tightening anything with multiple bolts, screws or what have you, never tighten one down and then try to put the rest in. If uh, gravity and your situation allows you to to put them in loose, by all means, get them all in loose first. And a little trick that I, I always use is I go down with, uh, whether it's a head bolt or what have you, just go down till it touches. Well, with a head bolt, you, you might have sealer on there and everything, but just so it lightly touches. But with the, something like this, where it's not that critical, it's just down till it touches and back it off a little bit. Down till it touches and back it off a little bit. My hand might be getting in the way there because I'm, I'm doing an overhead shot here. I'll try to keep it out of the way. Down till it touches. Um, <clears throat> in the case of lining up these uh, the pull uh, piece triangles on this thing, uh, you want to just have these screws lightly snug, very lightly. Okay, because uh, when you reassemble this thing, this will go back on top uh, the housing there and then your distributor shaft will go in there and then you make sure you put your clip and everything in there actually before you put the shaft in and have these lightly there and then once you have the shaft with these matching eight triangles uh, slowly turn it <coughs> excuse me and make sure you've got equal clearance between the inner triangles that uh, is on the inside timer uh, mechanism that's attached to the shaft make sure there's equal clearance on each of the triangles turn it one triangle at a time like the shaft uh, with the, its triangles, move it to the next one and, and just keep going around until they all go around. Once you get back to the start, make sure there's equal clearance between the tips of these triangles with that and the inner um, set of triangles that are on the shaft there. And if uh, you're going to find, like, uh, these will probably be tight from when you get it as a, you know, a new part, but you always have to check that when you put this back in your distributor. And so all you have to do is uh, See, that's a little bit too tight. Okay, so you got to get it just the right snugness, just so you can still work the thing, or you can give it a little tap with a soft uh, something that's not too hard and it's going to start putting marks in there. But you can just give it a light tap with, uh, you know, anything, stick of wood or something, and, and then line these things up. You might have to move it around several times and then tighten it down. <coughs> Excuse me. And then slowly by hand index uh, the inner. Eight triangles in the case of a V8 make sure you got equal running clearance last thing you want to do is have this thing installed in your engine and having them grinding off points in there you don't you just don't want to do that so take your time with this and make sure that you can go all one whole complete revolution with all the eight triangles and make sure none of them are going to hit and make sure that you try to keep the distance as equal as possible when you're um, doing the final tight down on these three screws and then once you've got it in there again, you can you can move the distributor shaft with its inter internal timer core there, the eight triangles, and move it. Check for side slop and do the same thing. You can push it one way and then turn it. Make sure none of that play in there or the play in this where it's uh, pivoting on the uh, the housing down in there that uh, none of this call it the perfect storm if you will, where you got the shaft. This clearance is going one way and this, this the, um, the clearance on this is going the other way and with that happening you could have contact with the inner and outer triangles. So try all scenarios that you can think of, push, pull, whatever you have to do and just make sure that none of these are touching when that uh, internal timing core with eight triangles is uh, spinning and depending on how fast you're spinning. The only nice thing about a distributor uh, for these things is they're only turning at um, half the speed of the engine crankshaft. So if you're turning 6,000 RPM then you're only going 3,000 RPM with this one. Uh, just a few extra things thrown in just for the heck of it. So there you have my video for today folks. Uh, just basically showing you how these things come apart and what to watch out for you when you install it. Reinstall this or a new part for that matter. Just make sure that all these things are adjusted so that nothing's going to hit. Uh, it's, uh, last thing I want to do is see you waste your money on parts that were in really good condition or new and have them destroyed or non-functional for that matter. So with that all said and done, today's video, take, take care, have yourself a nice day and uh, bye for now.